So welcome to the Chaos Data Science Working Group meeting for Tuesday, September 10th. Uh, as a reminder, we are under the Chaos Code of Conduct, so please be kind to each other. The question of the day for attendees. Uh, oh, hey, Greg. Uh, somebody could drop the notes in the chat again. That would be fab. Um, so the question of the day is what your favorite book or movie genre uh, mine is science fiction, uh, maybe slash fantasy, because I, I read a lot of that. Um, Callie's favorite is not. Is that a genre or are you just not? Not doing the genre thing. I, I'm, because I don't watch, I don't really read or watch movies. I'm more, I like to watch like a, a big reality TV and like multi-part like documentary series. So in the uh, entertainment spectrum. Well, I just refreshed my screen because I was looking at my screen instead of what Chan is sharing and all it said was not on my screen. <laughs> and I was like, I, I don't understand. <laughs> uh, cool. Um, many things. Fantasy sci-fi seems to be a big, uh, big one in the group. Hello, folks. I have no idea why my video is not working. I need to look into that. Um, but... Uh... <laughs> Kelly keeps telling me I should come chat with you guys, and Dawn, I've known you a long time, so oh, yeah. no, it's good <laughs> I, to see you. I would, I would uh, come and join in for a bit. <laughs> awesome, cool. Thanks for coming. I hope um, to make it a regular thing. So. Yeah, that'd be fab. That'd be great. Uh, so if anybody has any agenda items, there's loads of space on the agenda this week, um, because the one thing we did have on the agenda was Sean's, and he can't be here, so I'm bumping bumping that to next the next meeting in two weeks. Um, so if we if we want, we can just uh, we can just start with the project updates. Um, we did a big update on event location inclusivity last meeting. So I don't know, do you have anything new to talk about for event location inclusivity? I don't think we have anything new to talk about, but um, we we want to brainstorm kind of what a ne good next step might be. Um, it was something that would potentially add value to chaos. And if that next step doesn't add value to chaos, it might not be worthwhile, but um, just brainstorming that. And if anyone has ideas, feel free to, to ping us and let us know um, if you if you have thoughts on where we could potentially go with it. Okay. Could you do a like brief? I know we did like a more in depth overview last week, but could you do like a brief overview, just again, so then I can kind of like I know the general concept, but might help with suggestions. Yeah. So um, actually, I'll go to the chaos event. Um, so chaos already has a metric. Uh, called event location inclusivity. Um, and it goes through the different uh, reasons why this metric is important um, for developing a, or organizing an event uh, specifically on open source. And um, I, don't, I don't know who created this, but they beautifully made the metric and created um, some visualizations on areas that um, have discrimination um, or laws um, that discriminate. Um, and so um, we, we wanted to add to this metric or expand on it. Um, and I think in thinking through that, we thought, well, let's talk to open source organizers who um, are, are doing these events and see what variables or data they care about. And so we each talked to um, a different person and then got some insights from that. But then from there, um, I think we need a brainstorm on ways that to kind of go back to this metric or add value back to chaos in some way. And I guess share this metric in the chat as well. I hope that helps, Kelly. And did we want to do some of the brainstorming here? Is there another place where you're doing that? Are you doing it in the the DEI working group or? Um, 
we can do it here. And I actually, I think that's probably a great idea to do it with the DEI working group as well. Um, Elizabeth, what do you think? Yeah, I think either here or the DEI working group, which Chan, I don't know if you're even able to attend those, but I, I am there every time, so I can certainly bring it up on our behalf. Um, yeah, I think that <laughs> candidly, I think Chan and Sophia and myself are maybe kind of stuck uh, on what to do next. And so I think having the group uh, ideas from the group anyway would be super helpful. I don't know, maybe I misspoke Chan, but that's how I kind of feel. I'm not really sure what, what to do next. Yeah, exactly. I, I felt the same way. And so it's like, oh, we'll kind of try to brainstorm on what that could um, be. And I think um, that's a great idea. If you if you wouldn't mind bringing up to the uh, DEI working group, that'd be great. Yeah, if that's OK with this group to kind of move it out of here and put it in there. Yeah, I think that's good because I think I think the folks that work on DEI all the time probably have better better suggestions for for what they need uh, from the data science working group and that they, what kind of data they really need to, to better understand this. I mean, we can still talk about it here, but I think the, the brainstorming of what to do next is probably better done by people who would actually use the metric, I think. Okay. Thank you, Elizabeth. Anything else on event location inclusivity? Okay, no. Project Exodus. Yeah, I had talked about this a little bit last week that I was like thinking about kind of rebranding this a little bit and kind of changing what the focus of this was, especially seeing like seeing what Don did with the license change made me kind of think I was like, I don't even think I was really at like I would say it's asking the wrong question, but I was like, that was like, I was like, I was looking at Exodus and this was looking, and once you looked at license changes, like that was what I was looking at trying to do with this, not asking necessarily the right question, but something that had come out of that, the first like portion of this was to try to find examples of different, and some of the terminology will be kind of like helped with, is like, common event or common community occurrences like things that happen cons like at different points in like a like you not know, all projects obviously but it's like okay like specific point examples or things that happen within a community and how that trends like is there a trend of how that affects the community is there things that we can learn from this and this has come up within questions in red hat before and a lot of times we get stuck at the point of being like we don't have enough case examples. And so if we go to the readme, I kind of start going through this a little bit. Um, if we can move over, I don't know who's um, guiding. I think, oh, perfect. Or the readme. Yes, thank you. Um, and so the update, and so you can, we can either zoom out or scroll down um a little bit so you can see everything of just like trying to think of like major project events that could change the trajectory of the project i think that trying to figure out kind of a list okay what are those some of those more interesting like major project events that we want to look at that are that is similar to the idea of like a license change like a license change can really flip a community and how does that affect a community I kind of would like to change this overall goal of being like, what are some of those major community changing events? And then gathering the examples, those case examples. So when the more pointed, okay, this event has happened or something, or these questions come up that are topical, we actually have the case examples to go and look at. So I've had this happen a couple of different times where somebody's like, oh, what trends happen? Um, when X, Y, or Z happens, and I'm like, I don't have enough historical open source context to be able to even look at that. And so I think it would just allow for some more research and, and studies into these changing of events, similar to what Don had done from like the license change example. I thought that was really great. Like, I, there's a process that I would like to repeat with different, very monumental event points. So um, I think 
probably the first round of this for like the session would be, okay, what are those major events? What are those trajectory changing events? And then each week or so choosing one and then kind of going through that similar process that we had done the first time, started with Exodus. And then that's, I think the license change either came parallel or slightly inspired by and starting to gather this. So then we have this resource to be able to be used for um, just instances that come in the future. I like yeah. that. Yeah. yeah, I agree with Chan. I think that's I think that's a really good approach. I think it'd be good to bucket it into a couple of common common scenarios because I do think a lot of these these exoduses tend to um, tend to follow things like like what you've got listed here. I just added company acquisition because that that's a big one. Yeah, I think that's because it's like I realized I was like, oh, Exodus. And I'm like, that was an assumption of what would happen, not looking at what is a trigger and what does happen. Um, and so that's kind of is it the license change example made me realize I was like, OK, I want this is not exactly what I was wanting to do. And so, yeah, um, people want to kind of sit, think about I'll probably bump this again. Um, beginning of next week or try to talk to people also about it open source summit are what are those major trajectory ch like changing events that can happen within a community good bad or otherwise like I think that if there's even if there we always kind of look at like how, what negatively affects the community but it could also be something that maybe positively affects the community or we don't really know how it exactly affects the community so that's the that's the rebrand <laughs> Do we have time to try all one of them today? Just to see how that conversation goes and then that gives you kind of um, a base to then whatever, you, for going into Open Source Summit to see you know what additional questions you could be asking. Sure, I think it's like if people have any of these on top of head, I think the the three probably more notable, like the ones that might be the easiest ones to like come up with examples for would be like if when a project joins a foundation, like which foundation that is. The only thing about trying to do this right now might be good to list them and then pick them because I'd want to set up the um, spreadsheet of like kind of the specifics for each one. So I think that's going to be similar. It's like name of the project, um, date, but like, for example, like the foundation one, I think it would be interesting to see, okay, like if it's it, it, like what foundation are they entering um, and gathering a little bit, a couple more additional data points around the question like that. And I think each one might have a little bit more specific context to each question. So I kind of wanted to put this idea out there and see what other um, examples maybe first, and then we can choose one. And so then I can set it up for us to chew on. Yeah, that sounds fine. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, if we could go back to the README, I'd be curious to see if people like the company acquisition is a good one company. Um, and so seeing if there's any other ideas or if you need kind of a couple uh, some more time to kind of sit with this question to see if there are more instances that come out if uh if you don't mind random additions from someone who half yeah. a call don't know who i am um <laughs> then uh then yeah. i could probably come up with a few to put on the examples list as well um yes the please. Elastic search one is probably uh, a classic from our history right um i'm thinking about next cloud versus own cloud which was a long time ago now but obviously they split when own cloud went highly proprietary um what else leaps to mind rust rust had a whole thing with their community team quitting on mass a couple of years ago i don't know whether that would have had an impact or not um i'm sure i'll come up with some others <laughs> oh yes please so this is the type of thing that i want to capitalize on it might can, end up being i'll find some links and put them in the yeah. sheet hang on a sec um, but yeah, um, um to pick up the examples because it's like we have we do have a lot of open source knowledge throughout all, like this group and other groups of mm. it's more of just like gathering the the information to be able to actually do some more in-depth analysis yeah and one of the things that we might want to think about too um going back to the categories and i'm not sure what to call this category i i tend to think of it 
I tend to think of it as either like strategic shifts or technology shifts. And so there've mm -hmm. been a lot of exodus that have been based on, um, you know, a certain part of the community wanted to go in a certain direction and it wasn't where the maintainers wanted to take the project. And so I've, I've seen there are a number of exoduses around that. That was kind of the, the next cloud um, example was, um, yeah. You know, Frank really wanted had had concerns about the, you know the management of of the own cloud company because he was he was just the CTO, right? I mean, he was the creator of the the software, but yeah. he wasn't in a position to really really drive a lot of things within the company, and he got a bit disillusioned and kind of took it and and started it um, himself. And there, you know, there have been other examples like the GCC EGCS example is another one kind of like that where. The, you know, the changes that they wanted to get merged weren't getting merged and they had some fundamental conflicts and they took it and went in a different direction. And in that case, it actually went back. So it, it forked for a couple of years and, and there was an exodus and then it kind of came back together eventually. Um, I wonder if that will happen with open know. tofu. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> um, so just to tell you, I talked over you there, my apologies. <laughs> No, no, I was done. I was good. Mm. Um, what was the last one you mentioned? Um, oh, uh, GCC and EGCS. And you can find some of these uh, in the, uh, here, in this data set, there are notes and the notes cover, um, so it's like the, the far side of the, the page, the notes cover some of the, the things that, um, Pause the fork. Um, Callie, Callie, did you say you were looking for a rebrand on the word Exodus? <laughs> did I hear that right? Um, I mean, it's over. So originally, this was supposed to be just focusing on okay, let's look at whenever there was a major Exodus at a project and what the um, instances of it was, and then I saw what. Don had done more of being like, here's license chain, here is an event, and what is the impact of the event? And it made me realize that I wanted to kind of like, we can still fill in things of Exodus, but being like, here's, I wanted to look at it from, here's a concrete thing that has happened, here's the yeah. context, and let's see what the impact actually My is, not making assumptions well, of like, what, what, like, what happened. The word that jumps to mind for me is seismic, seismic events. Yeah. Oh, that's a that good shit that shake a community. That is a really good title because that's like the I, historical. Oh, go ahead, Callie. Oh, I was just going to say that like I didn't like I was thinking of this yesterday. And I don't really like had tied to any terms. I couldn't really. I was going to say there. I was like, I really don't know what to call this, but I like that a lot. Yeah, I like that too, because initially when we started this, we were kind of talking about Exodus and Takeoff at the same time. And we didn't yeah. really know how to wrap our heads around both of those. So we kind of just focused on, on Exodus. But I think if we think about it as seismic shifts, that does allow us to do this more, more broadly. I, really I mean, like ultimately, mm -hmm. I, I, I've sat here listening to you because obviously this is my first time joining you guys. Yeah. So some of you know me already. I'm happy to do an intro later if we have time. <laughs> but um, the thing that really jumped out at me is like, how do you analyze that? Because that really interests me. I'm like, is that going to be like a causal inference type thing where you look at some timeline and try and predict where it might have gone if that thing hadn't happened, right? And that could be in either direction. So the same tooling will work um, regardless. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, but uh, equally, I'm well aware that you know I shouldn't just walk in here and be like, "Hey, I know things." Oh <laughs> so no, this is good. Way. This is good. We're 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 an open group. Um, yeah, so let's yeah. actually do that. Let's do that, Greg. Why don't you go ahead and introduce introduce? Okay, yeah. okay, fair enough. That's a very. That's, Again, I don't want to take up the time in your meeting. It's not my airspace. Right? Um, but uh, so, okay. So, yes, hi, I'm Greg. I have been at Red Hat for uh, 12 years as of today, actually. Um, and I've been doing community here uh, for most of that time. I've been community manager for multiple different communities. Currently, I am officially not the community manager for Ansible for reasons that we don't need to go into, but I should be. Um, so, <laughs> because I've done a lot of work for the Ansible community. It's just that we're not putting a lot of resources into that right now. Um, so uh, so I'm being told to do other things that I would rather not be doing. Um, but nonetheless, uh, I have been doing community here for a decade or more. Um, and I've been in, in the community doing other things since before then as well. So I think I know I knew Dawn right back in the days when you were Puppet Labs, I think. Yeah. Um, and that was, and I was doing Foreman and that was all good times. And then, um, and then from there we've all gone and done various things. But yes, so I've been doing, doing community 
for a while. And I got into data and data science in 2018. I was interested in doing better data for for Foreman. Um, and then I just was like, actually, this is just really good fun. I just want to do more of this. So I joined the Ansible team to do their data for them because um, they've got 600 GitHub repos over seven organizations. And while everybody goes and builds a GitHub scraper for their first data science project, they all only ever work on one repo. Or if you're lucky, one organization. Um, and I don't have that problem. I have a different problem. <laughs> so I've built a lot of reporting and tooling <laughs> around all that kind of data. And meetups as well. Meetup API, if you have ever interacted with the meetup API, that's fun. So uh, we got 140 meetups, right? So yeah, you got you want to report on that. So yes, been doing data for a while, and Callie keeps telling me I chat with Callie a lot, and she's like, "You need to come and join the chaos thing." I'm like, I talk to you at conferences all the time, but I just never <laughs> seem to find the time. So I was like, right, I'm going to make the time. I'm going to come come participate more because I really need to. So thank you for having me. Awesome, welcome. Mm -hmm. Okay. So yes, if I can help out at all uh, in terms of, like I'm, I'm in this lucky position where I've done a bit of data science of my own and I've got a lot of community background. So if I can help with either implementation or just like, I spent so much time telling Kelly about rough edges that will catch things out, right? Like we've got some fun repos in the Ansible space <laughs> um, that will catch out all your metrics sooner or later. Um, my favorite being the F5 repo where they don't actually do open source properly and they do everything internally. Uh, and then what you'll see is the data Data, because they have to have it on GitHub in order to be included in the Ansible package, they will open a PR and then merge it within five minutes with no discussion every single time uh, because they've already had all of the debate internally, right? Uh, so, uh, and so you go and do some table of merge times or who's got the most, the least number of open issues or any of this kind of stuff. And they always top the table, but they're cheating. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, fun, fun job. Really. Right. I have talked enough. I'm taking up your time. I'm going to stop doing and this is why the practitioner guides focus on uh, interpreting your metrics yes, and not exactly. just, not just taking the numbers. That's what I love about Chaos is that you're actually trying to build something that people can go and build something out of rather than do a one size fits all because it never works, right? Yep. <laughs> that's like uh, I've had that, that chat with Matt several times. <laughs> no, no, that's um, so, yeah. I don't know if Greg, if you've actually, if you've seen the practitioner guides, there's something that are new from like the last like six months. And so it's okay. even like a more like pointed, um just like no, guides yeah i don't think i've seen that i think really oh, good. i'll have a look i'll take a look yeah, i just dropped a, a link in the chat they're all um they're all mit licensed and uh, people can contribute to them they're in the data science right. work group right. uh, repo putting that on my to-do list right now awesome okay cool i might even make a chaos point in frost this year every year oh. That'd I have to go and do config. I always have to go and do config management camp, right? Because first I was Fortman and then I was Ansible. And by the time you've done five days of that, the bit before FOSTEM is just not going to happen. So. Yeah, it's, it's <laughs> exhausting because a bunch of us also do state of open con, which sadly. Oh, God, um, that as well. Yeah. Sadly, I would love uh, to. conflicts with config management camp because I, yeah. I love that event. I mean, you know, Chris I and I were the going. first organizers of, mm -hmm. of config management camp. and. Yeah, such a lovely, lovely event. It's, but, it's a great event. But yeah, really the beautiful. stuff that extends around Boston, by the time I get through, um, it's, you know, you're running on like seven days straight of um, events and it's, yeah. it's exhausting. And then I just yeah, need to like curl up in a ball but, and not talk to anyone for a couple I, of days. I hope to make a different travel plan this year, let's say. <laughs> well, we're tentatively, <laughs> tentatively planning the Thursday before Boston. Yeah. Yeah, that's I figured. Yeah. Um, I might go see the Santos folks on Friday. <laughs> they always do Friday, right? <laughs> okay, so that's on my to-do list. I will I will read those. Awesome. Cool. I can't. I still can't believe the fonts and dates aren't like finalized. If those aren't the dates, I'm in big trouble. Oh, they will I be. Some very, oh, they will be. Very expensive flights. <laughs> you won't be the only person with that situation. Believe me, they they're not going to move it. <laughs> I, I, I don't. don't it makes it. Me, I don't think they will either. But it makes me wildly uncomfortable that they will not confirm that those are the dates. Um, but they put it, out a message saying they're still confirming with the university staff, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, they basically, they sent out a message. It was like, uh, so they said it nicer than this, but it was it was basically, um, stop emailing us. We haven't decided for sure. As soon as we do, we will post the new dates and let everyone know, was basically the tone of the message that they sent I mean, out. Everybody else has already picked their dates. 
So I, yeah, yeah I well, we're planning. We've already made our plans. Um, OFE already the their plans for the Friday before, uh, which is the what the thirty first or something. Yeah, um, yeah. yeah. So people people are making lots of plans around what we assume may or may not, yeah, be the dates. But it's either here nor there, hmm. I guess. Anyway. Um, the license changes and forks. I I don't really have an update since um from last last week. So this is so what I went through last week was um some case I've been breaking down to a couple of case studies. So I'm looking at Elasticsearch, Open Search, and I'm looking at Redis and Balky because they're very different, very different dynamics. And so far I've dug into the organizational participation data. So looked at who who works for uh, which companies and how that looks and how it's changed based on the dates of the license changes and forks. And so I went through all of that, but right now that's sitting in a private repository because I haven't, um, I was just experimenting with, with things and I haven't quite cleaned it up and, and posted it. So I will, I'll finish uh, cleaning it up and then um, merge those Jupyter notebooks into the um, data science working group. Um, Repository so that everybody can actually see what I've what I've done and see if there are any any suggestions. If anybody has any additional additional feedback, so I'll just like I said, I'll just share those Jupyter notebooks so that everybody can kind of see what uh, what I did and and what that what that looks like because I did go over it really quickly last week. But I've been on vacation, so I've been sitting in a chair reading my Kindle and drinking fruity drinks and not working on license changes and forks. So so I haven't. Good since the last time I was here, but I will, I will do that probably, um, yeah, probably the next couple of weeks. Um, um, can you tell us more about like what you're um, hoping to do out of this project? Yes. Um, so what I'm, what I'm, what I'm hoping to do is to Basically, because Elasticsearch and Redis are very different projects. Um, Elasticsearch, it was it was all Elastic employees contributing, um, with very with a few exceptions, um, a very small contribution. So it was almost entirely company con um, contributors. So the Open Search fork was not people. It wasn't a community fork, right? It was an AWS fork. And so they took it and it was a bunch of AWS employees who did most of the work. Interestingly enough, one of them was an, um, an old Elastic employee who had done um, some work on Elastic search. So they did have one person who kind of knew the, the code base, but most of the other people were, were kind of um, new to it. And so they, they did this fork um, that was very much, you know, a company taking it and forking it and then getting, trying to get people involved in the community. Um, and then if you look at Redis, so it's a very different example because when Redis changed their license, they had loads of contributions from external employees and uh, or external people employed at different companies. And um, it's interesting to see because you can see this in the data when you look at the license change date, a whole bunch of those people, the pe basically almost everyone who didn't work at Redis moved over to the fork immediately and stopped contributing to Redis. So, so that was a very different fork because that was a community fork. So it was people who were maintainers and established contributors forking the project. So what I want to do is because those are very different dynamics. Oh, and the, the Valky fork, uh, the fork of Redis is under the Linux foundation, whereas the AWS fork of Elasticsearch, OpenSearch is um, under AWS, Amazon. So, so I've got two very different projects that it's a similar thing. There's a license change and a fork. And um, what I want to do is compare compare those two. So like I said, I've, I've started by looking at the organizational participation because I think that tells us a lot about who, who was doing what. And then what I want to do is um, I'm going to pick some metrics, but what I need to do, because I also want to publish some of this from a more academic standpoint, I need to go back to the literature and decide which metrics are going to make the most sense and which ones I can justify um, comparing the projects. And then look across a couple of different measures of project health where um, and, and look at the license change date and see how the original project changed or see the differences between the original project and, and the fork. But I haven't picked what metrics those are going to be. And it's it's going to be a metric by metric comparison. So it's not um, open search is healthy and Alaska search is not healthy. So it's not, I'm not gonna bundle them all together and, and be like healthy, not healthy. 
I'm going to be like, you know, on this metric, which is used to do whatever. This is what um, this is what the Elasticsearch project looks like, you know, when you look at this metric. And this is what OpenSearch looks like at this metric. And possibly, you know, looking at Elasticsearch before and after the, the license change. Yeah. So, so that's the idea is to look at to look at organizational participation, because I think it tells us something interesting about why the forks happened and why they happened the way that they did. And then also look at project health, both for the original project um, before and after the relicense and for the for the fork. But I'm still trying to figure out exactly what that what that's gonna look like. Cool, thank you for that. Um, yeah. Is there any way we can help? Oh, that's a really good question. Um, I'm sure yes. Uh, what I <laughs> what I need to do is uh, get myself a little bit more organized, and because um, I've put some notes, you know, basically I need kind of a research plan, and so I've I've got some notes for a research plan, and I need to put those um, put those somewhere, and then I think once once I have that, we can figure out you know if there are other people who want to do bits and pieces of this, and I haven't figured out where um, where to publish this. Um, I'm kind of looking at mining software repositories because that might be a, a logical academic conference to, to target. I was I was going to try and do something small at um, OFA, but my talk didn't get accepted for, for OFA, um, which is fine because I, I actually submitted proposals with two different groups of people. And the, the one that I submitted to talk about um, with a couple of people from Sovereign Tech Fund and the Linux Foundation um, to talk about funding for open source projects. So we're doing some research around that that got accepted into OFA, which is OFE's academic event. So Callie, can I was, you tell the acronyms? Oh, are these? Oh, sorry, I was gonna say I was like, can you add um, what the acronyms are? And is that the one that's at Harvard? It's the one that's um, at Harvard. Yeah. So uh, OFE oh, is Open Forum Europe. And OFA is their conference that's more focused on um, academia. So it's Open Forum Academy. And so it's the idea with that conference is they try to bring together people who are doing research. Um, so more of the academic side together with policy people and um, practitioners. So it's kind of bringing all of those people together to talk about um, various aspects of, of open source. So I went last year, it was in Berlin and it was it was a really interesting conference. So I will, um, I will be coming again. And so, uh, and it's free to go to like, so Callie yes. can register for it and attend. Yeah. I mean, it's going to be less than two miles away from me. So I will <laughs> most likely, um, I'm just trying to remember if I actually ended up signing, I want to make sure that I ended up signing up, especially since you're, um, going to be there. I'm like almost positive that I did, but I'm so I'm like looking through my emails right now. So I'm glad because I just never I had see I saw it and I was like, that's interesting. This looks relevant to me and it's down the street. But I couldn't get I didn't find anybody who had gone to it before. And um and I just I was just like, I guess I'll probably go, I guess. And now I'm glad that you're to know that you're going because I definitely will go and you'll be in my backyard so we can get foods and all the great things uh, cambridge yeah, and awesome. somerville i mean have you been to i'm mean, assuming you've probably been to boston but i don't know if you've been to like spent any time on this side of the river i have i spent uh a day or two around cambridge and harvard yeah i'm um, just kind of hanging out once when i was in boston for for work i think um it was really nice i really enjoyed it so i yeah i'm looking forward to to go in and I'll, I'll let you know what my travel plans are, but I'll likely spend an extra day or so because I'm, you know, the flight from London, I'm just gonna fly to Boston and then San Francisco and then to oh, Elements. for, um, for and member summit. I'm back. Yeah. So I'll, I'll spend a weekend somewhere between part of it in Harvard, probably and part of it in member summit. Yeah. Let me, oh, we can talk more about it, but especially that time of year, it might not, we'll see, there might, it might still be foliage time. So if you are like interested in like apple picking, hiking, just anything you think fall, it's Boston. <laughs> awesome. Cool. So Greg, where are you located? 
regretting your choice of location? <laughs> I don't regret it that much. I live in rural Scotland, so it's lovely to live here, but it's not the easiest to go to conferences. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's true. I, always, I always have some travel to do. Um, I mean, even, <laughs> Edinburgh's, even Edinburgh's an hour away. So. <laughs> uh, um, so, yeah, I love it here. And speaking about autumn, you know, it's where I live is known as big tree country, um, Perthshire. Uh, so uh, so what, yeah, what, well, what part of rural Scotland are you in? Um, I forget you know the UK pretty well, right? So, um, uh, if you, do you know Stirling? No. no. No, okay. So you got Glasgow and Edinburgh, which are not as far apart as people think they are. They're not about 50 miles apart, right? And in the center of that, you have Stirling. I'm about 20 minutes north of that. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm just outside the central belt. Um, or to put it another way, I don't live in the Highlands, but I can see them from here. Ah, nice. <laughs> because the highlands of course are defined by the highland boundary fault geologically and, and that is literally two miles north of here <laughs> so um yeah um, the cool. highlands yeah i haven't traveled as much as scotland as, i haven't traveled as much as scotland as i would like i did i i've been to inverness too much of the world to see yeah i did the loch ness marathon with a friend of mine uh and it ends inverness, in inverness is lovely Yes, that was inverness a lovely city and, if you like yeah. if anyone here likes history the place to go is to go right to the top go to Orkney. Orkney is amazing. Um, my wife is training or studying archaeology at the moment um, and uh, she spent a lot of time up in Orkney um, which is just a stunning place but you know even for me it's four hours to get there so yeah. <laughs> it's, uh, nice. it's a long way north. But yes not the easiest thing to go to conferences unfortunately. <laughs> There's never anything in my backyard really. Not since I had no open source summit in Edinburgh in 2017. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I remember that. So, yeah cool. good times. Okay, uh, does anybody have anything that they want to talk about for the what's new in data science section of the agenda? I don't have anything, but this is slightly my soapbox in general right now with data science. I want to make sure that in any most of like our data science focused context that we don't just limit ourselves to LLMs because that just seems like the only thing anybody wants to talk about ever. Um, and so I just want to be making an active effort in all of my data science groups and environments to try to push for let's try to make sure that whenever it comes to being aware of like some more of like emerging data science things to keep ourselves expanded especially from the, the span of like chaos like we're looking at metrics and visualizations i think the llm surge is slightly a problem not a problem but everyone's looking at that and just like skipping over the fact that like making data for decisions, looking at metrics, looking at visualizations is not something that can be replaced by LLMs. Yeah, um, I'll, just, I'll just plus one to that. Yeah, <laughs> my, uh, one is not enough. <laughs> no, it's just like, this is yeah. a specific thing. Everyone I, just wants to put it on everything. I don't yeah. know if it's new, but I've spent this week. On, oh, sorry, go on, oh, you go I first. was just working on a project with somebody and, and they were, uh, we were talking about, you know, projects that are run by foundations and projects that are run by companies have different different dynamics. And um, it's kind of hard to identify all of the projects owned by open source foundations because there are so many of them and a lot of small ones. And you don't think about like Conservancy and OSI. And there's a bunch of places that also host open source projects that are foundations. And they were like, no, no, I'm sure we can get this from, from the LLM. We just have to ask the question differently. And they tried and tried and tried and tried. And the data was miserable. No matter how they tried to do it, it kept pulling in awesome. all these company-owned projects and saying that they were by foundations, especially because a lot of projects mentioned that they are cloud native. That does not mean they're under the Cloud Native Computing Foundation, but most of the cloud native projects, including a bunch of the ones that are owned by Red Hat, ended up on their list of, of foundations. And, and I was like, you know, finally, I was like, you know what, we, we need to throw this list away. We just need to... Because it's not crazy how that works. There's no way know, we right? could, no way we could use it. It's, but it's there are other ways to get projects from um, some of the top foundations, which is good enough. Yeah, I was gonna, I, I was on a different train of thought, but I completely agree that LMs are just over overhyped. I think a little bit. But I mean, my my world right now is survey data because I'm trying to help Fedora out with one of their servers. Mm -hmm. Sophia's not here. I was going to ask her some questions. But... <laughs> so I, 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 I always go back to her Community Central video on like doing good surveys and things. But right now, I'm trying to get something useful out of a fairly bad survey. Yeah. <laughs> so they, are, they are harder to write than people realize. So it may not be new, they really, they really but, are. Uh, 
but I'm trying to do like some modeling of the survey results so I can get something useful out of it. So, Cause it's like latent variable stuff, right? They've asked a whole bunch of questions, but they haven't asked the one question that they should have. And so they've just sort of danced around the subject for 15 questions. And I'm like, okay, there's gotta be something I can do here with a latent variable thing. <laughs> Item response theory, I don't know, we'll think of something. <laughs> so that's my world right now. Oh, and Quarto, I love Quarto. Right, it's just the best language. It's the best tool for writing reports. <laughs> I've never used it. You know, okay. Well, I mean, okay. So the, the the caveat here is I come from the R world. Right? I taught myself R like five years ago, oh. and I love it. Um, and so I've been exposed to R Markdown for years, which is how R does its report writing. It's it's the the literate programming thing, right? Where you weave text and code together in one document, and then you compile it, and you get like an HTML or a PDF or whatever out of it, right? Um, so not unlike what a Jupyter Notebook does, right? Uh, very similar. But the difference here is that it can be diffed because it doesn't store the output in the file. <laughs> so you can actually like diff it. It's just yeah. text, uh, which I love. I, um, I propose I that you should show the group what you showed me last, like do a little like walkthrough demo of what you moved yeah. over to Core Pro and also just like the met like you want. the metrics and visualizations that you do for be Ansible. Yeah, yeah, I'd be happy be to. Great. I don't know if that's the now or, or a later thing. I'm happy to do that at some point. Absolutely. Um, yeah, because spend. because we end the meetings at ten to the hour. We only Perfect. have five yeah, we'll do it next minutes, time. Yeah, and next I, time. I know I'm gonna have more than five minutes of questions about <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I'll be happy to. So, I, so I don't want to. I'm, I'm particularly right. careful because I know if Sean's here, the first thing he'll say is, "Why haven't you used Augur?" And we'll have a long <laughs> debate about it because I have tried <laughs> repeatedly <laughs> to use Augur for my data set. Every time I try and change my code base to use Augur, I find another problem with it. And it's no credit, no, no, no criticism of him. Like Augur is a complex project, right? And there's a lot going on in there. <laughs> but literally, I used to try and use Percival back in the day when we had Grimoire Lab and all that mm -hmm. to it. Nope, still wasn't enough. I had to go write my own scraper for it. So, <laughs> so it, it does. I need it to do and, and, and very little else. Um, but it's uh, the br brief version is GitHub GraphQL API, regular cron job that pulls a bunch of stuff into a data frame and a bunch of reports that are then generated uh, regularly off the top of those. Um, so that's the that's the pre C. Cool. But, so, awesome. Yeah. Yeah. So, I think there are some really cool. good visualizations, like the visualizations in the set that you do for Ansible, I think is really. Just like it's insightful. the orbit that gets it's the orbit one that gets everybody. <laughs> the others yeah. are just plot. The other ones are just scatter plots. <laughs> but uh, still. the orbit model is still is still pretty fun, I think. It gets people's attention. So yeah. Okay, we, I'll awesome. be very happy to so do we that. will yeah, we'll put it on the agenda for the, the twenty fourth. Twenty fourth, yes, that should be fine. That's the day I go before I go down to London for DevOps days. So, oh, I used to organize DevOps Days London. It's such a it's such a lovely group of people. I love DevOps Days. I don't. I don't want to criticize anyone, but I'm not getting funded for it, which is crazy given who I work for. <laughs> Nothing to pay for myself to go down there. Um, oh. Where Ansible is sponsoring DevOps Days London, I'm still not getting my ticket paid for, but I'm not going to sit here and rant. <laughs> oh, that sucks. Um, so I shall pay for myself and I'll see my friends. <laughs> <sighs> Well, anyway, it's the top of the hour, so I would say it's been lovely to meet you guys, and nice to see you again, Dawn. Um, I yeah, do intend to try and make this a more regular thing and help out, because it really should be. <laughs> awesome. That's great. Yeah, we'd love to see you more often. That'd be fab. Okay. I think I think we've run out of things um, on the agenda. Oh, we do have one reminder. The um, general channel on Slack has a forum for things that are newsworthy um, around chaos that you want the chaos project to help you promote. So if you give a talk at a conference that talks about chaos or you wanna write a blog post or you wrote, wrote a blog post somewhere else, um, there's a forum to help you get that into the, the chaos promotion engine, our chaos comms group. Is that um, just in the bookmarks or? Uh, yeah, it's at the top okay. of the channel. Cool. And then we do have a data science working group channel where we announce meetings and things. Yeah. Um, so Don, for the next meeting, I'm happy to facilitate that one. And I also, I know Sean said he wanted to talk about his research and publication. And we could um, also look at some of Greg's visualizations, but I'd love to hear um, any retrospectives that you all have uh, coming back from Open Source Summit, um, things from ChaosCon, things from the conference in general that relate to uh, chaos and data science? 
Well, well, we're not doing a chaos con there, but um, oh, okay. But there are a whole bunch of us talking. So yeah, I, I, so yeah, I've just added it as an action item for the next agenda, and that would be great if you ran the next one. That would be awesome. Cool. Thank you. Uh, I would assume this would probably be like the like a general chaos meeting question, but is there a booth that's happening and that needs signs up for for your okay? No, cool. Okay, all right, awesome. So enjoy your ten minutes, and I'll see yeah. some of you at the uh, chaos weekly uh, call, which is I guess in another ten minutes. Sounds good. All right, see y'all. Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye. Thanks, folks.